the iOS 16 public beta is here, which means you can now get a taste of Apple's upcoming mobile software ahead of its stable release. As we saw at WWDC in June, the iPhone is slated to get a whole new lock screen, edit and unsend options in iMessage, improved dictation, a medication tracker, new sharing features, and more iOS 16 is shaping up to be a beefier update than years past, and you might understandably be itching to test it out. As always, I have to remind you that installing any beta software comes with risks. Some of your favorite apps might stop working, or worse, your phone might be completely bricked. If you're still set on running the beta, then at least make sure you back up your data. You can access the preview by enrolling on Apple's website, which will push a download option to your phone's software update section. Just as with the iOS 15 public beta last year, basically all the features announced at WWDC are ready for testing. The only things missing would require developers to make some changes, like integrating an API for the new live activity update box on the lock screen. And the redesigned CarPlay won't be available until next year. I can't get into every single one of the long list of changes here, and I'll save my more complete evaluations for our full review later in the year when iOS 16 is officially released. For now though, here's what you can expect with the iOS 16 public beta. Once my phone restarted after installing the update, the change was obvious. Instead of the clock and list of notifications my eyes had grown tired of, there was a box at the bottom of the page telling me the software had been updated. The clock font was a thicker, blockier style, which I immediately wanted to change. I long pressed the wallpaper, but that brought up the page for me to enter my passcode. This is basically a bug I found where I can't access the lock screen editor or switch between pages unless I set up Face ID. Basically, you can't tweak or change lock screens without logging into your phone, but when you enter your passcode, the system takes you straight to your home page, bypassing the lock screen altogether. Face ID allows your iPhone to stay on the lock screen even after having unlocked your phone. Once I did get into the lock screen creator though, I could choose from eight styles and two colors for the clock, as well as add up to five widgets across two boxes at the top of the page. I picked the weather, air quality, and UV index widgets, and then added two more skins with different wallpapers featuring my favorite photos. You can also choose your preferred emoji, people, or color. There's also options based on the weather or astronomy, which uses your position to show where you are on a globe. It can also display the moon or solar system. Each page can be linked to a focus mode, though there must always be a default lock screen that isn't tied to anything. The revamped lock screen also features a new live activity box at the bottom. The idea is that when you're following a sporting match or recording an interview, for example, you can stay updated without having to leave the app open. Developers need to integrate a new API for this to work for their apps. Right now, Spotify and Apple's timer apps, for example, work with this box, making it easier to pause my music or cancel and pause my countdowns. One of the most useful changes coming with iOS 16 is the ability to edit and unsend chats in iMessage. For now, this works best with people who are also using the public beta. Anyone on iOS 15 will see a second message that says edit it to followed by your new words. Just like what people on Android used to see when iPhone users used to send emoji reactions to texts. You have 15 minutes after sending a message to access the options for undo send or edit. When you take back a message, by the way, your friend will see an alert saying you unsent a message. Texts that had been updated have the word edit it next to the red receipt below the bubble as well. Apple also updated the dictation experience. Now, when you tap the microphone on the iPhone's keyboard, the QWERTY setup stays in place instead of being taken over by a waveform animation. A small tab with a microphone icon appears over the input field when you're not speaking, so you know dictation is still enabled. You can tap mistakes in the box and continue dictating to fix them, which is similar to what Google did with its updated voice engine on the Pixel 6. Unlike on the Pixel 6 though, iOS 16 doesn't allow you to speak commands like send or delete all. This dictation interface also didn't appear when I was typing in the App Store's search bar, so despite this being a system-wide feature, it still appears to be missing in places. Of all the updates that iOS 16 brings, my favorite has got to be in Visual Lookup. 
or as I prefer to call it, the quicker sticker maker. Basically, you can long press a subject in any picture in the Photos app and copy it without its background and then paste it somewhere else. I was impressed with how accurately the system picked out subjects, whether it was a coworker smizing against a blue sky or a model in a flowing long dress in front of a building. When you paste your selection into a message field, it's automatically sent as a cutout with a transparent background. But often the system would think I was trying to send a picture and add a black background, which took away from the effect. This is a known bug though, so it shouldn't be happening by the time iOS 16 is ready for its stable release. I was looking forward to seeing the new medications feature in the health app and satisfyingly, it's mostly straightforward and intuitive. I easily found my daily pill and Apple offers US users the option to scan their packaging label. The database is still somewhat sparse and I couldn't find the specific brand and dosage of vitamin B12 that I take every day. But I imagine as more people use this and plug their own pills in, there will be more entries soon. While it is helpful that you can choose frequency intervals like daily or alternate days, specific days of the week and more, I wish there were a way to choose an end date. You can set a specific day to start your meds, but for short-term situations like a course of antibiotics, for example, you have to manually delete the entry after you're done. The most intriguing aspect of medications is that if you enter substances that could have risky interactions, the system is supposed to flag it for you. This isn't limited to drugs either. Apple also prompts you to add whether you consume alcohol, marijuana, or tobacco. Through this, I found out that one of my medications might increase the effects of marijuana, and the health app labeled this as a moderate interaction. I'm allergic to a few different drugs, including some major antibiotics, and I've listed this in the medical ID portion of the health app in case of an emergency. When I added one of the antibiotics and medications, I wasn't alerted about it. Granted, the information in the medical ID is simply a list of words as opposed to pieces of data that Apple can compare items to. And I probably wouldn't be dispensed medication containing stuff I'm deathly allergic to. But it would be nice to see Apple think about how best to approach situations like these. Concerns about medical privacy are at an all-time high, and I almost didn't want to list my birth control in medications, although I do believe that Apple has one of the better privacy policies around. Still, I would feel better if there was a way to hide this information behind a passcode, for example. I've barely covered the long list of changes that iOS 16 will bring, but we've touched on the stuff that will have the biggest impact on your daily use. If you frequently collaborate with others, the new Safari tab groups can be helpful. I created a group and shared it with fellow deputy editor Nate Ingram as we tested the new software. I had the Engadget homepage and Apple's iOS summary open, and the next day he had added some other reference pages. I didn't have time to check out some of the other new features like the assistive door detection tool or sound recognition, but I did try live captions, which provides subtitles for audio playing through all the apps on your phone. Though Apple's version is occasionally inaccurate and slightly slow compared to Android, I appreciate that I can tap the box on iOS and choose to pause live captions or tap the microphone icon to switch to transcribing sounds in my surroundings. I can also minimize the live captions box on iOS, leaving only a floating circle on the screen that stays out of the way until I need subtitles again. Apple also added a new safety check tool that allows you to disconnect from people, apps, or devices that you no longer want to be connected to. You can review the people and apps that have access to your location, photos, calendar, or contacts, and revoke permissions or choose nuclear options like emergency reset or select all and stop sharing. Changing these options requires you to sign in either with a passcode or by face ID. I've been enjoying the iOS 16 public beta so far, and though I still hesitate to recommend installing beta software, people who aren't risk averse will probably find this update enjoyable too. If you're worried about stability and losing your data, you can always wait till the final release, which typically happens in the fall, to get the updates. For our full review of iOS 16 when it's officially released, as well as coverage from all around consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.